Hello and welcome back to yet another step on my journey to becoming the undisputed king of the YouTube game dev scene. This time we'll be laying down what is basically the rest of the engine for the yet to be named game featured in my last video. And you may have noticed my fancy new microphone, so you can now hear my voice cracks in 4K, but you know like uh, 4K for your ears I guess? So like a uh, 16-bit integer 48 kilohertz beauty? Whatever though, hopefully now that I'm not using such a scuffed setup, my voice won't crack anymore uh, and people can stop pointing it out in the comments. Anyway though, last we left off, we had our little guy here running around his campfire, but he was still missing quite a few things. So this time up, I'll be running down this little to-do list before we can get some real gameplay into this bad boy. So one of the first things I really needed after the last video were some better debugging tools. So I set aside some time at the start here and hacked in a couple screens that let me visualize collision areas for everything in the level and give me some extra timing info so I can check out if things are getting too slow. Next item up on the list was getting our little guy here to put his fat little arms to use and actually hold something. Since the game is going to center around the player holding a torch, this is kind of central functionality that I left out last time. And as you can see from the background here, this is actually done by taking every frame of the player's animation sprite sheet and marking one pixel where the base of the object that the player is currently holding should be shown. In this case, the only holdable item so far is a torch, so after a bit of code, if we slap one of these torches in his hand, he's running around with it just fine. And also important for gameplay, we need to get our player to be able to interact with some things in the world, so we need to start figuring out what direction the player is facing. So this is actually pretty simple, we just throw a box on him, adjust the bounds of it, and uh, oh, um, okay, maybe this isn't quite right, let, let, let me just adjust that again, just tweak here and there, and uh, geez, uh, Christ, um, just give me a bit guys. A few moments later. Anyway, once the player's uh, little problem was fixed, we now know what tiles and entities the player is facing by seeing what collides with this box in front of the player. I also took a bit of time here to edit the sprites and animation code and make the player blink to make him look just a little bit more lively. Also just kind of cute, I think. After that though, I can move on to the next item up. Now this game won't need any fancy cutscenes or anything, but there still needs to be a system of stopping gameplay, you know, throwing up some text on the screen, maybe giving the player a few items, and messing around with the lighting a bit. I've never quite done something like this before, but after a couple hours of work, I figured out how each scene could be made up of individual parts, each with a specific duration that could be used for animation timing, and I was able to put together an intro for the game, which looks something like this. Pretty cool, right? Sort of artsy, like a bit mysterious. Kind of makes you want to, you know, keep going and see what's out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll also have to leave out here because I didn't record it. The six long hours that I spent on a bug that happened when I was trying to get the torch to move in that scene because, well, poor little naive me, I didn't know that TypeScript only checks types at compile time and not at runtime and will let you do some wildly stupid stuff without warning. I mean, you know, who would have thought that a language called TypeScript would type check anyway? It's crazy, I know. But it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't say something to complain about the language that I'm using. Anyway though, with all that done, the game now needed a little more atmosphere, so sound was up next. So to start testing things out, I messed around in BFXer for a minute. Uh, yep, that's perfect. That last one will be fine. Let's use it. And I just threw down some basic sound code using the Web Sound API, and uh, hmm, that's weird. Uh, unhandled promise rejection. Uh, I'm I'm not allowed to play sound on my own web browser. Fucking web programming. Okay, this will this will just be another minute. Just let me pull up the docs here. Uh, 
Alright, sorry about that. I just shaved a few years off my life trying to get this to work with multiple web browsers across multiple APIs, but hey, check this out. Ah, beautiful, don't you think? Gorgeous. And now, last but not least, honestly, the thing we need the most out of everything in this video to move on to making a real game is the ability to load in custom levels so the player has, you know, like, things to do, I guess. Gameplay. Whatever that is. So for this task, I booted up my trusty open source tiled map editor, link in the description if you want to check it out. Designed a little test level here with some walls and some entities, which as you can see, comes straight off of our existing sprite sheets. And I've had Tiled spit out the map as some nice JSON for us to use in the game, so it's super easy to load into TypeScript. And after some hacking around with the level loader, I was able to translate this array here into tiles for the level. And if we just turn off lighting real quick, you can see my design in all of its glory. And then not too long after that, after a few really nasty hacks that I'm not too proud of to get entities loading properly, we now have a full level with the tiles and entities all loading, so we're basically at the jumping off point to get some real level design done. Oh, and I also tried to debug this whack graphical glitch you can kind of see in that last clip where the uh, pixels were only rendering halfway or something like that. Uh, it was pretty interesting, but I eventually got that fixed too. But well, that's about what we're wrapping up for today. I've spent enough time this week uh, fighting against my web browser. Uh, come back next time to see me completely lose my mind to TypeScript. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll get a playable game out of it.